Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze from a while, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And I'd like to give a big shout out to CJ Goodfellow from Sports TV. Bomb Squad, baby. All right, Josh Taylor said he wanted to take the high road, but Cyclone Promotions pushed him. And basically, they came out and said he illegally signed to top rank in so many words. And he illegally breached his contract. Taylor claps back on Twitter. I'll link the tweet source in the description. Then a screenshot to show up. So let's talk about the bad split between Barry McGuinn and Cyclone Promotions and Josh Taylor. So we back. Good fellow Sports TV. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And, um, yeah, man, let's talk a little bit about it. If you don't know, Josh Taylor signed a promotional pack with Top Rank, which puts him possibly on the fast track to fight Terrence Crawford or Undisputed Clash and or Undisputed Clash with Jose Ramirez. It was believed that he was going to sign a co-promotional deal with his own after conquering the World Boxing Super Series. Um, but, you know, that didn't happen immediately, and, and Bob Arum came through and swooped him up. So let's talk a little bit about... Cyclone promotion statement that they put out there and that said we are very disappointed to read the news today that Josh Taylor has signed a promotional agreement with another promotional company Josh Taylor is under exclusive worldwide promotional contract with Cyclone promotions we are successfully brought we have select successfully brought Josh to the pinnacle of the sport from the day that he turned professional including working alongside other stakeholders in boxing to deliver him the biggest fights most recently, Josh became the IBF world champion in May in 2019, then unified champion in October 2019, and we have been working since then to plan the next stage of his career. We are sad that Josh has felt the need to attempt to break his contract in the manner, in this manner and frustrated at those who have caused him to do so. So um, that's what they were saying. They came out here and basically tried to make Taylor look bad and Bob Arum. Now, like I explained in my original video talking about Taylor signing with Bob Arum in top rank, um, yeah, they tried to sign David Benavidez, and David Benavidez actually had breached his contract with Samson Boxing and actually went back to Samson Boxing uh, and gave the money back to top rank, his signing bonus. But Josh Taylor said, I wanted to stay respectfully silent about my relationship with Cyclone Promotion, but given they have released a statement, it's only proper that I respond. So his response is going to come up, and I'm going to read it. It's a little lengthy, but um, like I said before, Bob Arum has, you know, try, tried to sign fighters under contract before. And like I said with David Benavidez, I think he gave him like a quarter million dollars, $300,000 to sign with top rank up front in cash. And David Benavidez left Samson Boxing. He had just signed a new contract with Samson Boxing. And Samson Boxing threatened legal action or called their lawyer and Bob Arum, you know, basically had to rip the rip up the contract. And Benavidez and Al Heyman, was, it was reported that they returned the cash back to Bob Arum. So David Benavidez didn't go. So Bob Arum ain't no stranger to things like this. But let's read it. He said, "I acknowledge and appreciate the role that Cyclone has played in my in my career." He had, I think he had a little typo. My career today. Three weeks ago, I terminated my promotional agreement with Cyclone as a result of various breaches of contract, including, in particular, breaches relating to a conflict of interest on the part of the promoter that allowed me to search for a new promoter, which I have found in top rank. I wanted the two part ways amicably and without uh, resorting to court proceedings. I thought and hoped the McGuinnans would feel the same way given the litigation they are involved in with other fighters. I hope all of us can now move on in a positive way, concentrating on things which advance us all. So uh, one of the fighters that they in litigation with is Carl Frampton. Now, Carl Frampton has moved over to Frank Warren and BT Sports and top rank ESPN. ESPN and BT Sports are basically the same company. BT Sports is just in the U.K. instead of the United States. So that's one of the fighters that they having problems with. So Cyclone Promotion really has no problem finding talent. They have problems in Keeping the talent, it's a small-time promotional company, uh, regional in the U.K., they're really not worldwide. So a lot of fighters, you know, they go over, and they if you can go over to ESPN and get the bag, a lot of them dudes do. So Barry McGuinnan need to find a way to actually, you know, make his fighters feel better. But it's hard to make it. You can make your fighters feel as comfortable as possible. But, um, you know, if the money, if, if there's so much money coming from the other side of the street or another street, then it's hard to make them feel that way. And they didn't really try to drag Josh Taylor's name through the mud. And they could be in the U.K. They got interviews coming up and stuff of that nature. But he wasn't fighting on big networks to begin with. 
you know, he was fighting on regular TV over in the UK, and he wanted the fighters that just didn't get a lot of play. But in they parts, um, I think when they was with him in the beginning, they had him fighting on American cars. So he fought once in Texas. I think he fought in Nevada, Las Vegas before, and he fought in New York City. So he had been fighting in the United States, so it won't technically be his United States debut. It might be his televised United States debut, you know, once he come over to ESPN and top rank. But um, like I said before, anytime you lose a talent, a guy that's in most people's pound for pound list, like Josh Taylor is, and you don't have nothing to show for it, you lose a Carl Frampton, and then there are other fighters that it sound like they lost and they go into court with. I mean, at the end of the day, it don't boil down how good they treat them, how not good they treat them, or the breaches of contract. It just, I think, it boils down to they just don't have enough money, enough clout behind them to keep these fight to keep these fighters happy. All right, and. Whatever those breaches of contract was, like conflict of interest, um, I know it's a conflict of interest in the United States under the Muhammad Ali Act to promote a boxer and manage him at the same time. In the UK, that is legal. So those conflicts of interest, were, which allowed him to breach the, breach the contract, uh, I mean, that's his business and his business alone, and they business to know what they did to breach the contract. But he not the other fighters. There's been several other fighters that they breached the contract and that's time trying to get away and that's not getting treated right. If that's stealing money or not paying the money properly done or, you know, breaching any of the, the boxing laws or whatever they got in the UK, that's up to them. But honestly, uh, one of the biggest questions I had was who going to train him now? Because if he fell out with Barry McGuinnon and Shane McGuinnon is his son, you know what I'm saying? Barry McGuinnon is a Hall of Famer um, somehow, some way. Um, who going to train Josh Taylor now? Is Josh Taylor going to move down to the United States and train with a coach, uh, American coach is the question. I think that could do him so good. I thought Shane McGuinnon is maybe the best coach going in the UK right now, but that's not really saying much. So if Josh Taylor can get with a United uh, American coach that can show him how to move his upper body a little bit, he gonna be tough for he gonna be tough for Jose regardless. He gonna beat the dog walking crap out of Jose Ramirez, but he gonna be tough for Terence Crawford if he learn to get slicker upstairs. He got good footwork, you know what I'm saying. But he got the earmuff syndrome that Arthur Abraham, Pacquiao, and Errol Spence got. You know what I'm saying? He got those ear to put the earmuffs on, let you work, and then get out the way. His defense is, is his feet. But if he started to move his head a lot better and they able to get him a little bit more torso and, and, and hip work up top, you know, I think he might be one of the better fighters in the world. He tough and he big. And we got to see what he brings to the welterweight division because he was really, really big for 140 pounds, and that's how – you know, along with his skill, he was over over overpower overpower Ryan Martin, Ivan Baroshnik in the top of the tournament with Regis Progress. Now, the way he beat Regis Progress easy. All right, I don't know why people acting like that fight was close and Regis screaming robbery. I only had Regis winning like four rounds, and the only reason he won four because Josh Taylor eye was caused by a head cut and it closed up, and Regis started coming back in the last couple rounds. So that fight wasn't close, but people are gonna be biased, and for whatever reason it is, over in the UK. They seem not to really like Josh Taylor, all right? I don't know if it's because he not with Eddie Hearn or he not with Queensberry Promotions and Frank Warren and he was with Barry McGuinnon or whatever the situation may be with him. But I think it's a good move. If he go back and watch that telecast, Sky was basically pissing on his name and room for the role fighter in Regis Progress, and he was easily beating Regis Progress. That wasn't no close fight, man. I don't know what people be talking about. He got, he got annihilated, Regis Progress. He was too small. You know what I'm saying? In two weeks, and he just didn't have enough finesse in his game to hang with Josh Taylor. But once again, you got to look at, and I'll, and I'll be, people bring this up in the comment section. He has some racial issues in the UK. You know, apparently he got a little tipsy in the club, and he got into it with an Asian bouncer, and he called him some racial slurs. I think cunt was one, uh, and, and, and whatever else he said as well. I'm not sure exactly what he said, or I can't remember exactly what he said. But, you know, a lot of one of the British actors, black actors came out there and said he wouldn't support Josh Taylor after the little spat that he got into uh, with the uh, the Asian body, the bouncer in the club. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm not feeling sorry for nobody else. You know what I'm saying? Um, if he has said the end bomb or something like that to a brother over there or a brother over here, wherever the brother was, then I couldn't support him no more. You know what I'm saying? So. They don't feel bad for black people when we face racism in America. I can't speak speak about it in the United Kingdom. I've never been there. But they don't feel bad how they treat us over here. And then they expect us to feel bad when, you know, people getting kicked out the country and they getting on the wrong side of the border. I'm done. Nobody has sympathy on us. So as long as he ain't say the M-bomb was racial 
to a black person, I ain't got no problem with them because they allow us to do anything to my people and we supposed to forgive and move on. What happened to the other, they going to be stuck on it. So he ain't get good in my book. So I talked about it before a little bit on the video or a live stream. I'm moving on from it. Long as he didn't drop the M-bomb or he called nobody a monkey of my people, I really don't care. It wasn't that bad. Everybody get drunk and say some things. But long as you don't say that drop that M-bomb, he ain't got no problem with me or, or, or call my people a racial slur, I'm not worried about it. But I think one of the reasons he may be trying to come to America, other than he want to prove that he the best and he's a competitor, you know, he got a competitive spirit, just like uh, Tyson Fury and obviously like Billy Joe now, he possibly can be coming to America and fight Canelo Alvarez May 2nd. Now that he got a competitive spirit, you know what I'm saying, not other than a competitive spirit, I just think he don't feel the love in the UK. You know what I'm saying? The UK, the UK fans tend to not like the good fighters they got. If you good in the UK, you know what I'm saying, you notice that you don't get the love that a Joshua get or or a Dillian White get. If you if you good, if you don't get no love in the UK, that's how you know you good. And you beating dudes at a high clip, that's how you know you good. But like I said before, I don't know if they're going to tie Josh in litigation, but uh, Carl Frampton is in litigation with Cyclone Promotions, and he's still fighting. He's still getting that bag. So like I said before with, with Josh Taylor, man, um, sound like he, he did right by breaching his contract. He said he did it three weeks ago and he kept it under wraps. You know what I'm saying? He didn't come out here and say, I'm a free agent. He didn't get on social media. You know, he kept it quiet. He, he, he played the role. I know the zone offered him some stuff. ESPN and top rank probably offered him. Not sure if Al Heyman tried to offer him to come, come aboard over there. But I think a lot of people are looking for, um, that network commitment and, ESPN building a nice roster, but ESPN got to step it up because the zone stepping it up and PBC stay stepping it up. So they got to stay, they got to stay close to them and bringing Josh Taylor. It brings a variety of um, options there. You know, they can do way to do it undisputed with Jose Ramirez. He got one more mandatory after Victor Postal. I mean, that opens up a UK market. Maybe they want to take Crawford over there to fight him in the UK. I mean, that opens up a nice, a nice amount of uh, options for them at top rank. So, um, obviously the fight I want to see him in is Jose and then the winner can tune up at 47 to fight Terrence Crawford. And, um, they announced it right on ESPN now, you know, a cyclone promotions upset claims, uh, Taylor still under contract, you know what I'm saying? But he said, he, he said he legally split just like Carl Frampton. So we'll see if it's, if it's, if it's smoke, then there's fire. If it's more than one fighter, obviously it's more than two fighters now. Because Frampton, Taylor, uh, Taylor and, Frank, and, and Taylor mentioned multiple fighters. So, McGuinness need to look at what he not doing right from a boxing promoter standpoint and get it together. And if he can't get it together, then he need to get out the game because all he going to be is a bridge to a bigger fighter getting a bigger contract. It's, it looks like he know how to spot talent, but he don't know how to keep it. And I'm telling you all, that's because he don't have enough money behind him. He can't compete with ESPN. He can't compete with his own. He can't compete with Al Heyman to keep his fighters. So when you can't compete, what you do? You either join join the home team. He need to get with Frank. He need to get with Bob. He need to get with Eddie. Or he need to get with Al Heyman and, 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 and try to keep his fighters that way. But hey, it is what it is. Congratulations, Josh Taylor. Pretty sure Bob gave him a big old dumb signing bonus. And, you know, them top-ranked contracts difficult. Once you start getting championship fights, then they start extending and stuff of that nature. But I'm pretty sure he happy right now. He might have some place down the road. But, hey, we'll see what they do with them. Goodfellas Sports TV. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach, on, reach out to the email if you have a business question, inquiry, response, ship, video request. Keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation? PayPal, Cash App, in the description. Best way to donate is share the video. And let me know what you guys think about the McGuinnon, top rank Josh Taylor situation. One time for the one time. It's your boy, CJ Goodfella, Goodfellas Sports TV. And check out our boxing playlist and other playlists. We gone.